right, guys. So in your chapter four, uh, some of you haven't got to it. Some, some of you already passed it. Uh, one of the things was motor testing and hooking up some test cords and making these motors run. So I wanted to go over some of these motors. We've got a uh, Whirlpool dryer motor here and a Whirlpool washer motor. This is from what they call a direct drive washer. So we're going to talk about how to hook this up and actually run it to test it to see if it's working. This was one of the projects that you had to do. Uh, now we got the dryer motor here. This one has a different centrifugal switch, but the motor is located here on the diagram. And one of the things you have to look for when you're hooking up this motor, what happened? You're not in the camera. It's not following me? Right, there you go. Okay, Cam camera lost me. Okay, so one of the things that uh, we're looking for is that um, we have to look at the motor and we have to look at how power comes in the motor and goes out the motor when you're hooking up these test cords. So if you look here on, on this diagram, let me just go ahead and uh, pick a color here. Power is coming in on line one and goes up to the start switch on here and it's going to go into our dryer motor and it goes into the motor in this terminal. It feeds both the start and the run wind. It then comes back out, oops, comes back out here and goes out this way. But the key things we're looking for is where power comes in and where power goes out on this motor. That's 5M and 4M. Those are numbers that are located here on the centrifugal switch. M just means motor. And the five and the four and the one and the two, we got one and two over here and threes down here and six over here. Those are all these terminals on this motor and how they're going to connect to this motor. So all we want to do is be able to put power to it and make the motor run. We want to test this motor. Is this motor good or bad? So we look at the motor, it comes in on what terminal here? We found it comes in on 5M. And if we go through the motor, it comes out where? On 4M on this motor. <clears throat> so those are the two terminals on this motor, 5M and 4M, that power comes in and out. And this works for almost all dryer motors. There are a few that are different. I know that the Electrolux model has a motor that's actually reversible. This motor here, is not reversible. So this is a standard dryer motor. You'll find it on GE, Whirlpool, Frigidaire, so forth. And the five and the four is pretty much standard on all those motors. So what we need to do is we need to look over here. We need to look at the numbers on the switch, five and four. And this one right here is four, and this one right here is five. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a test cord and we're going to hook up the two terminals of the test cord to both terminal 4 and 5. This one is on 4, and this one is on 5. And carefully, if we uh, hook up power to it, the motor should run. And that's how you would test the dryer motor. Let's say you go to a dryer, and the motor's not working. And you've tested all the parts on the dryer. You test the timer, like here, the door switch, the start switch, the thermal fuse, and you, you don't see your dryer motor running. Well, you wouldn't normally just take a cord like this and hook up the cord to the dryer and plug it in. So what's important about knowing about this 5M and this 4M? Tell me, what, why do you think you should know that? If you're not going to do a test cord like this, why do I even know the 5 and the 4M? Maybe those are the pins. I'm sorry? Maybe those are the pins to test the... They are the pins, the... but... That's, they... where, that's where electricity is coming in, you know? That's where electricity is coming in, so how would you use that to your advantage? Um, you go... Well, if you check the timer, the start switch, the door switch, and the thermal fuse, and the motor don't work, could the motor be bad? Yeah, awesome. So, I guess one of the things you need to know if the motor's not working is, am I getting power to the motor? 
And one of the questions you need to know is, okay, where would I put my meter to test power coming to my motor? So you would go to 5M and 4M with your meter, and you'd put your meter on these two test points on the motor, and if you had voltage here, and the motor didn't run, the motor's bad. But the test that I had you guys do, where you put a test cord on here and you run it, was for you to try to figure out, okay, how does power go into the motor and go out the motor? Where are the points on the motor that bring the power? We said five and four. And then you would hook up a test cord and run it just to see, yeah, that, I made the motor work. Because everything else in this dryer, this timer switch, this door switch, the start switch, the thermal fuse, they're all there for different reasons. The timer switch sends power to the motor, but it keeps the time. How long is the motor going to be on? You put the time cycle for 60 minutes, 40 minutes, and when it reaches 40 minutes, why did it do that? Okay, it might be too far away and losing me there. So, um, it might be 60 minutes or 40 minutes, and when that cycle's over, this machine's going to shut off. 